Hey everybody, welcome back to Cheap Brew. My name is Anthony, and today we're trying an all-grain beer brew. And hopefully this all goes according to plan. Let's talk about the ingredients. Uh, my old hops went bad. They, I kept them for a little bit too long, so I got these new Mosaic hops. And I'm curious to see um, what trying a little bit more uh, hopping is going to do. I also got some lighter grains, two different kinds. I've got Dingeman's Pale Ale Malt, and that's milled for our all grain beer purposes and Great Western Crystal 15. And uh, these are the only two. I got two of these and one of these. I'm gonna mix, uh, mix it all up into about three pounds of, uh, what is that? That would be the grain bill. I don't know, this is all still jargon to me. It makes beer, I drink it, it's, hey, it's, it's great. My last project also was a lager. This one is gonna be an ale. I've got the uh, Stellar Science Cali, so we'll see how that goes. Um, since it's really warm this summer over here in the Seattle area, this should ferment out pretty nice. So that's going to be great. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put all the grain together and mix it up, stuff it in this massive bag, and then I'll talk you through my mashing, watering, and boiling setup. So I'm going to go ahead and mix all three pounds of the grain in here and then transfer it into the bag. I kind of just want to see what it looks like because it might get a good shot on camera. So let me walk you through my mashing setup. This is beautiful. This pot, which my wife got to make like dumplings or something like that, works really, really well. This little guy right here, it was gonna make a great spot for me to sit my bag of grains when we're doing the lottering. If that doesn't work, I could use this, which uh, is gonna be great for boiling with the hops. And then I got this, fantastic. We're gonna shoot for about a gallon and a half fill up two one gallon carboys about 75 percent up and uh, then two weeks of fermentation and hopefully we have a good ale after that and then two more weeks so to get started on our mash in what i'm going to do is get three quarts of water put it into our mashing vessel which is just going to be this guy with the bag inside of it and bring the temperature up to about 135 to 140 degrees for maybe 30, 40 minutes, I'm not really sure. And then we'll raise the temperature up to about 160, 170, and that will be our mash out. And then we'll, uh, then we'll lauder. So let's get going. You may have noticed that I added five quarts instead of four. That's because at the bottom of the pot, it was not quite filling the way I wanted it to with the like colander in there. If that becomes a problem and I can't fill it up with the rest of the grain or the grain doesn't get submerged, it's fine. I'll just take the colander out and stick the bag in there and we'll just kind of go from there. I want to be able to make sure I have good control over the water temperature because last time I did the brew, I think that first of all, I got it too hot. I went straight to 160 and well over that. And so that's where the control part comes in. I want to make sure that I can keep the water temperature where I need it. So we got the temperature stabilized at roughly 140, 145. I think that'll drop it a couple of degrees and it's still where I, roughly where I want to be. So let's go ahead and add the bag and add the grain. So as you see, this kind of looks a little bit like oatmeal. I'm gonna stir this up and then I'm gonna check the, uh, the temperature of it real quick. Here's our temperature check. So that's 135 degrees. This is, this is pretty epic, not gonna lie. I like this way better than uh, the other way. It smells better too, pretty fantastic. We'll wait to see what it's like when it's boiling. Let's just keep mashing, breath. about 10 minutes left on our mash process here before we raise the temperature a little bit and lauder it and then ultimately bring it to a boil and add hops. The rest of it, it's coming up. We're about 148.9 degrees right now, I know because I got my trusty thermometer in there watching. Different burner now because uh, I got up to like 152 and I wanted it to stay closer to 150. 
145 to 150, but not above 150 yet. So that's why we're over here. While we're waiting, we should start heating up a little bit of water that we're gonna use to lauder. I've got two quarts that I got in a pot that I'm gonna heat up to 170, 180 degrees. And then we're gonna take this grain bag out, pop it in to this thing, which I've been using to hold the spoon. And then we're gonna pour that water over top of it, get all the sugar out of this grain, and then we're gonna get rid of the grain. So we're done with our 30 minute mash. Now it's time to, over 10 minutes, raise the temperature up to the 170s or so. So it matches that little pot back there. And then we're gonna pull the grain out and put it into this thing right here, this colander. Stick that at the top of the pan. We're gonna pour all that water over it. And then we are going to bring it to a boil and add hops. And that's where all the fun begins. So I had to bump the ISO up to 3200, so it might be a little bit grainy, but um, I think that's a, an amazing color. As I mentioned, it is now time to measure out some hops for our wort boil. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start the boil now, because measuring hops shouldn't take very long. So we're here to measure out some hops. So I figure is we'll do two ounces at 45 minutes and another two ounces at 15 minutes. All right, so we got our scale and our Mosaic hops. We're gonna throw the bowl on there, zero it out, and let's measure out two ounces of these hops. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. You know what? We'll call it half an ounce. We're gonna do this as our 15 minute edition and as our 45 minute edition, we're just gonna add the whole freaking bag. Do you hear that? That's the sound of boiling wort. We're at our 45 minute mark. It's time to add some hops. We're at about 15 minutes left to go in the brew. I'm gonna go ahead and add our 15 minute addition of hops. Now that that's done, we need to start thinking about what happens next, and that is gonna be cooling down this wort. So, I have some repurposed copper tubing that I have turned into a wort chiller. I also made a yeast starter, so we've got about three or so grams of uh, ale yeast starting up, rehydrating in a little bowl of water. I might have to add a quart of water to this or so, to uh, get the desired amount of one and a half gallons. Right now we're sitting about five liters, which means we might need to add about two quarts of water. So let's talk ice bath here. I'm gonna fill my sink with cold water, just right off the tap. I'm gonna grab my ice packs and I'm gonna grab some ice cubes and throw it in here. Uh, and then I'm gonna run this fountain pump through this sucker right here, across the kitchen into the pot. Something that I neglected to mention is that I need to figure out how to squeeze out all the juice from this hop. Just scoop them up into a corner here and squish them out. Let's chill some wort. It's important to make sure that whatever goes in the wort at this point is sanitized. It's been 11 minutes. That water is still cold. Let's take a temperature, 110. Where were we at 170 before? In 11 minutes. We'll give it another 10 minutes or so. It's been 20 minutes. The temperature is now just a hair below 90. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're good. We're gonna start uh, by taking a gravity reading and uh, we'll go from there. Not bad. 1.06 is where that's sitting at. I've decided on a process of trial and error. I've just added a quart. Let's check the gravity and see if we can push it even a little further. I think the lowest I'll take is five. 5% 5 is the lowest I'll take. 
5% just for a little bit extra. Time to filter it and put it in the big gallon jug. So now, once again, we wait. It'll be about two weeks before we can put this into uh, its bottles and let it go for some carbonation out in the closet out there. In the meantime, I'm gonna cover it with a paper bag so that a bunch of light doesn't get in while the yeast are doing their thing and hope to God, fingers crossed, that we don't have another blowout like last time. Overall, the process seemed to be pretty easy after doing it only one time. Even just with this new bit of doing it all grain, wasn't that bad. It does smell up my apartment a little bit though, and it's not as bad as it was last time. However, my wife has come up with seemingly a worse way to describe it than last time, which was chow mein noodle water. She says, it smells like mushy cornflakes sitting in hot milk. I love you, honey. Thanks for putting up with my drama. We'll see you in two weeks. Well, it's day five now, and it looks like our fermentation has come to a complete standstill. I left it alone for five days and went out on a trip for work, and it's just done. I'm gonna do a quick gravity test to see if we're ready to put it into the bottle, and then, if we are, we're gonna go ahead and put it into the bottle today. So after only five days of primary fermentation, we have a 1.013, which is not bad. Um, I think that's good enough for me to rack this off into the bottling jug. Let's get it. There's a few things we need to do before we bottle the beer. First, I'm going to clean and sanitize five 22 ounce beer bottles and one 12 ounce beer bottle. That should take care of everything in the bottling jug. Second, I'm going to measure about 0.8 ounces of corn sugar, put it in about a half a cup of water, bring that to a boil, throw the corn sugar in, and that's going to be our priming mixture. We're going to make sure all the sugar is dissolved. We're going to take that, dump it in the beer to be bottled, and then we are going to put the beer in the bottles. After that, we're going to put caps on all the bottles which have been sanitized while we were working on getting the priming mixture all set up and then we're going to let it sit for about two weeks. So before we actually put the beer into the bottles, I want to do an experiment. Last time I was curious how much 0.8 ounces of corn sugar raised the gravity of the beer. So we're going to check the gravity one more time before it goes into the bottle. So it raised the gravity from 1.013 to 1.017. So not much, but apparently that's just enough to get it to carbonate. Enough games, let's bottle. I am so happy. That worked out super well. I got five full 22 ounce bottles to the T. Didn't need the 12 ounce bottle this time. I'm not excited though about having to wait another two weeks to try one of these. 
So I'm gonna take them, stick them outside in the closet and let them condition or carbonate for about two weeks. We'll check back in at about that time and see just how tasty one of these is. Goodbye beer. Have fun fermenting. Goodbye. <sighs> Fuck, now I have to clean. day is finally here. It's been two weeks since we bottled our beer. It is now time to try the beer. Let's dive right into this. Right off the bat, it is a very nice light amber color and I'm pretty pleased with that. It's carbonated pretty well. Got a nice little when you open the bottle. So let's do a quick smell test. As I expected, I can't smell very much right now, but I really wanted to see if I could still get some good flavor I'm just getting over a little cold. That's interesting. It's definitely bitter. I think it's important for me to follow up on this in a week when I get more function in my nose back, but it's definitely bitter. I can tell that right off the bat. So we're back. It's been another week. Finally got most of my senses back. It's now time to give the official taste test for this delightful kind of light amber beer. Let's see. <gasps> Finally. Smells good. It smells light. It smells very light amber-ish. We'll see how bitter it actually is. That's weird. So when I did my, oh there it is. There's the bitterness finally kicked in. So there's this really weird bitter aftertaste to this thing and it takes like five seconds to hit you in the face. Before that it tastes like a regular IPA which is not bad. I'm impressed. Overall that's not bad actually aside from that bitter slap in the face but I'm not cringing so that's positive. I would do this again but with a little less hop next time. So there you go. An, a success story surprisingly once again for an all-grain beer brew in a very tiny kitchen. Next project I'm already working on is going to be a blackberry wine from Locally Picked Blackberries. I've already started editing that video and I intend to enjoy this while I do that. So I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>